What's up, Sneak Peekers? I'm Nick, and we're here at South by Southwest for the premiere of Julio Quintana's The Long Game, starring Dennis Quaid and Jay Hernandez. We're going to be talking to the cast and crew. You're not going to want to miss this. What drew you to this role for this particular kind of story? Because as Latinos, you know, we go through this kind of thing even now. So what drew you to this story now? Yeah, I mean, when I first read the script um, and found out it was a true story, I was in awe of what these boys did uh, at the time. You know, I, I, I was so shocked that, that these boys played golf. They were incredible in the 50s, went on to win this tournament. I mean, as Latinos, I had never heard this story. And what an incredible story that these boys persevered and pushed through all the adversity to really achieve their dreams. I mean, that instantly, I'm like, you know, that's, that's the migrant story, right? You know, pushing through your dreams and achieving what you want to achieve in life. Well, yeah, I mean, I, when when uh, the producer, Javier Chapa, brought me this one, we had also done Blue Miracle together. And to be honest, at first I was kind of like, well, didn't we just already do this movie, you know? And uh, But then when I actually dug into the story and I saw that, you know, my family is, my, both of my parents came here from Cuba, so I'm first generation uh, born here. And, and seeing what these guys did, these young boys who, you know, built uh, their own field out in the, out in the, out in the middle of nowhere, uh, for me that's very inspiring and it really resonated with me. So I... I felt like it was different enough that uh, I, I, it's a story that I wanted to tell. I didn't feel like I was really retreading any territory, you know. You play the the main lead in this movie, JB Benya, who comes to join, wants to join this all-white golfing club, but gets rejected based on the color of his skin. Right. And as Latinos, yeah. you know, this kind of thing happens throughout our lives, like almost entirely. What was it about this particular story about the Mustangs that drew you, that compelled you to want to tell this story? I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely underdog story. It's Texas. And, you know, as a side note, my, my mother's family is from Texas, so that's kind of like I got a bit of a connection there. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things where in the media, for some reason, uh, Hollywood has ignored the Latin community to a, to a great extent. And uh, a lot of these stories will never get told unless people like myself and Julio and Chapa and Dennis come, came on board later. But unless we push these things forward, um, it's it's kind of a, a very strange thing because our community disproportionately supports film and television. Like we prop the business up in a major way, right? Uh, yet, you know, oftentimes our stories are, are just ignored, and uh, I think it's incumbent upon me in, in terms of kind of where I've sort of landed in the business to uh, help push things in a different direction and help get these stories told. And uh, yeah, this one came together in the right way. And I, I knew Julio could handle the material. I was a fan of his from uh, his prior work and, and just excited to make it happen. And, and, and very excited that it came together and we have a huge turnout and we're at South By and it's, it's all good. I'm just, you know, I'm just psyched to see it with, the, with an audience now. To be able to tell the rest of the world that even in times when our people face oppression, discrimination, prejudice, there were people like the Mustang Five that were able to overcome that and show that we can play the game of golf. We can succeed in any every other things that we're uh, confronted with. And it, despite everything that you put in front of us to keep us from, from succeeding, we can do it. And this is exactly the type of film that tells the world, look, they did it despite the fact that they were discriminated against, they weren't allowed to play on golf courses, didn't have new equipment, didn't have lessons, uh, didn't have training, and yet they won the state championship. And that's a feat that cannot, cannot be emphasized enough. I gotta say, I really loved you in, in The Heights. Thank you, it was thank fantastic. you so much. Thank you. How would you compare working on that with this game, with this long game, mm -hmm. it's another Latino story, but it's completely different from In The Heights. Yeah, I mean, well, thank you, first of all. Thank you very much, that means a lot. Um, that's also a really great question, but I would definitely say, you know, In The Heights is, of course, a musical, so um, whether you like that or you don't, I think In The Heights did a good job with making it easily digestible. You know, the, the music isn't your stereotypical musical theater music. But obviously, you know, from going to a musical to now being able to tell a true story, um, you know, this, this did actually happen um, way back in the 50s in Texas, which is a nice full circle moment to be here at South by Southwest and be able to tell that story where it actually happened. Um, 
fortunately enough, I played Gene Vasquez in the movie, and I was actually able to meet the, the man that I do play, and some of his family is here tonight, which is really exciting. Actually, some of them are in the film as well. Um, but as for the differences, I would say, you know, when telling stories that are about us and people like us, it's really easy to attach yourself, especially with real world experiences or things that you might have gone through. Um, but of course, with this being a period piece, there are, you know, there, it, it's, there's going to be some difficulties in the way. And, uh, you know, it wasn't anything extreme, uh, but it was, it was definitely, you know, with when you have an amazing cast and crew like you do and a really, really good script, um, it's, it's definitely a lot more, it's a lot easier to be able to do it. Is there anything you hope audiences gain from this movie? Well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we have a lot of conversations right now about race in America, and I think that uh, looking back at the 50s and seeing what these guys did and what they were able to accomplish and some of the things that they were up against, I, for me personally, as I explored this story, it kind of gave me a sense of gratitude for some of the things that these the people did before us, the, the doors that they opened up, that, to, to be able to give somebody like me an opportunity to be standing here today, you know? Um, I mean, it's not. It's it's like sort of. It's sort of not a golf movie. It's about these kids. It's about a man's journey. Uh, it's about this J.B. Pena. You know, at the end of at the end of the day, this guy uh, learned something about himself through these children, and he something he believed was super important and something he needed. He finds out later that there's like a greater purpose to it. So yeah, uh, there's there's a, there's a lot of like complexity to the story and to the characters. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, this story is obviously about perseverance, right? Uh, it's about staying dedicated and, and uh, through love, just pushing to your goals. So it's a story about perseverance, you know? If you really love something and you want to pursue something, then with all your effort, you can win tournaments and, and be great. So, yeah. How do you feel about being at South by Southwest for this movie based on, you know, your book? It's premiering, world premiere. I am extremely proud. When I first approached the guys, the young, the, the members of the team, to write their story, I told them, and I made a promise to them, that I would tell their story to the world. And I did it in print, getting the book published. People started reading about it, uh, and the people got a hold of it in Hollywood. And now this film is going to tell their story to the world. And I'm very proud and excited about that. How was it adapting that book into a screenplay? You know, it was... It was a challenge I think because um, historically you know it's it's a very like it's a great book and it's but it's about kind of like the path and the journey and, and it's a long journey it it's takes a long place journey over a longer time than you can kind of depict efficiently and a, and on screen so you have to take movie. certain licenses which mm -hmm. is tricky because you have to pick and choose yeah and then I think what we were worried about was like when early on at the very beginning of the process uh, Javier Chapa the producer uh, flew me down to Del Rio. I'm from I'm from Eagle Pass, so I was familiar with the story and the history. And and uh, he flew me down. And I got to meet Gene Vasquez, and hung out with him all day, and we played golf. And uh, right away, I felt a really like strong responsibility to like, how are we going to focus on whose whose point of view are we going to be telling the story from? And I think that was a really important thing. And so we wanted to really focus on the kids. Um, as much as we focused on J.B. Pena. And um, so I think, yeah, I mean... We wanted to honor their story yeah. and do them justice, so mm -hmm. we, we hope that what, through what people see, they'll get that feeling that yeah. We, yeah. we did so. How would you say your time at UT helped you prepare for your career as a film writer? Well, I, when I went into film school, I, I didn't know anything about how to make movies. I, I knew I wanted to tell stories, uh, but I had no idea at all how to do it technically or anything, and so... Uh, yeah, my time at UT was really where all the formative seeds were planted, you know, lear learning ca camera work, learning cinematography, and exploring different kinds of filmmakers I had never heard of growing up. And, and so that really, for me, hel helps spark kind of the, the creative growth that I, I've been working on for the last 20 years. You know? And as student filmmakers ourselves, you know, we hope to make these kinds of stories as well. Do you have any, as a young person yourself, do you have any advice for other young people who want to go into the movies to create, to act, to produce? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, we're in a time right now where we need a lot of real content, a lot of things that touch your heart. Um, not doing things necessarily for the views or, or, you know, for social media, but really finding stories that impact you as students and 
and um, telling those stories, you know, read newspapers, read articles, find some good IP, watch movies, just really involve yourself within all of the art forms. Um, and then just keep going, you know? Gladly I'm here, I went to school too, you know, so I'm really happy that I'm here now. You know, just, I think you've, you've probably heard it a lot, but just keep on going. Honestly, at this point in the world where we are today, there's so much opportunity, and um, you know, it feels really good to be able to say that. I've been doing this for seven years now, um, so I started out pretty young, but um, you know, there's there's there was a lot of typecasting and, and stuff like that, but I think where we are today now is we're at a really, really good point where you know, specifically brown stories are being able to be told so much more and, and you know, so many other stories are as well. So I think really persistence is the key and um, definitely you have to be open to rejection. That's, um, that's, that's definitely a big one. And, and you know, it, never to take it negatively. It's, uh, it's something to help you grow. Take that and take it with you to the next project. Yeah, I guess I would say that, you know, at, when you're first getting out of school, you're, there's a lot of temptation to get, get pulled into things that sort of, sort of, you know, uh, scratch the itch, creative itch, and they, you know, I, it kind of feels like what I want to do, but it's not quite. And I would say that uh, prepare for a, a lot of rejection and a lot of uh, frustrating years out of school, and try to avoid anything that would would distract you from whatever your your main goal is. You know, uh, that, that's 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 the main thing. Just just whatever you really really wanted to do. Uh, a very small group of people actually make it through the gauntlet, and most of the time it's because they end up just stopping trying, you know, because it's, even to this day, man, I got to scrap for every, just getting this movie made was the fight, so um, just just get a thick skin and put a helmet on and keep trying. Find the story that tells something about somebody that succeeded despite odds, and then push it, push it, never give up in trying to get that story into the film. Love, love what you're writing. Enjoy it and be enjoy the process because this doesn't, you know, this is a miracle. Uh, Jenny and I being here is a miracle. That a, when a movie gets made, it's a miracle, right? So, you know, it's um, it's important to to uh, to enjoy the process. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.